Well, hello, Crashing Podcast, and this podcast, we've been waiting a while for this one, and this is with the band Black Mekon, one of my favourite bands in Birmingham, absolutely brilliant, and probably a band that are very well known for their very short songs as well, so like, yeah, they're, they're cool as f***, like... It's just everything's been getting in the way. I know this podcast was recorded a month or two back. But like, with events and shit like that, it just gets in the way. And you know, like, then it means like, it takes me longer to upload the podcasts I've done months back. So I'm sorry for those um, who've been waiting for this to come out, but it's out now. And I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to be playing some live music um, by um, Black Meek on some of the live footage that's on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't actually like, record the set when they were supporting John Spencer and the Hitmakers. I went to that gig and I think that was probably the first time I ever saw Black Meek on and they're absolutely brilliant. And they're very true to the word that their sets are very, like, was sort of short, really, like, it just felt like minutes ago and they just started, then all of a sudden they're finished because their songs are, like, two minutes, one minute, stuff like that. So, like, but that's the genius of the band, Black Mekon, like, it's their little, like, that's what they're known for, I guess, and that's what I like. And if you don't know them, like, they wear masks. So that's like something like about Black Mekon, that's something to remember, that's something iconic about Black Mekon. So they're one of those bands that are pretty different to what's going on like now. And they have such a great sound. I love that sound. Very loud, very noisy, very raw and in your face. And I love that. So like, I hope you like that too. So I'm going to play one of their tracks now and hope you like it. Then we'll go straight into the interview. Um, thank you for your patience with this podcast and see you later.
Well, hello, Crashing In Podcast, and today I am with Black Mekon. Hello there. Hello, hello, sir. Do you want to say your names and what you play in the band? I'm Black Mekon. I sing, I play guitar, and I play the Meconatron 2000. Our brother Black Mekon, play drums and boom. So, how are you today? Mm, not bad. It's a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to really answer that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can either brush it off and go, yeah. <laughs> it's all right, and just treat it like that. We can really answer yeah. it, and you'll be here for hours and yeah. be depressed at the end of it. <laughs> um, do you um, do you want to talk about your gig that's coming up on uh, Thursday? What's the date? Um, with John Spencer, was it? Thursday. Yeah, man. Uh, what's the date? Oh, is it the seventh or something? Oh, no, it'll have gone anyway, won't it? By the time actually, it's yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. But are you excited? Well, yeah, it, was, it was. We can treat it posthumously, can't we? And say it was an incredible it gig. Was, yeah, best we've ever uh, played. Best show we've ever played. What a crowd! <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen that many people fainting and screaming and crying in an audience. Uh, yeah, John Spencer uh, is a good friend of ours now, but like we've loved him forever. Yeah. He just we we essentially followed him around and hassled him until he mm. became our friend. Yeah, and, uh, and his his band he's got now is incredible. Awesome, yeah, yeah, the hit makers. Yeah, yeah. So, um, have you been doing much gigs over the year, like since no, your this, release this is of the album? The first back time back oh really since the end times yeah 2019 December yeah. 2019 we toured Japan yeah so the last show we played was in Tokyo mm-hmm. and then we've done like a few of those silly online things uh, but they don't count obviously yeah. and this will be our first time in a crowd of sweaty greebos oh, since, nice. the, uh, nice. since the pandemic yeah. yeah so what was it like not doing gigs over that Covid period Absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Just yeah. indulged ourselves in the studio yeah. and got crazy and mm. just fiddled with loads of bits and bobs. like cockroaches, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nothing's going to really affect us that much. It's like the, the, the Black Knight in, uh, in Monty Python. It's like, yeah. so chop off an arm and we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, it's been two years um, since your last album and um, you got a new album called We've learned nothing. We've we learned nothing and you've got it on vinyl here right now. Yeah. Um, so you want to talk a bit about, about that album and how you developed with sound since your first album in 2013? Well, it's funny you should mention that. Yeah. It's, um, it's no spoiler, really, with yeah, the title yeah. of the album. No. <laughs> we haven't developed at all. Oh, really? <laughs> it was like a, it's, it's a 15-year celebration. Hmm. So we recorded the, our very first album, which was never released um, again, which would be normally be dangerous. Yeah, but it managed to sound exactly the same as the original album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whenever like band like the Temptations do something like that, and they re-record an old yeah. album, it'll mm. be like that. It'll be overproduced and sound really, you know, yeah, huge compared to the original. As actually sounds a little bit worse, I think, if anything, like quality-wise, it's very raw. Like, yeah, that's what yeah, I like yeah. about your music, it's very raw sounding. Like. So we recorded that album and then did a, a sister album, a follow-up album, mm. continuing the first album. So yeah. each, each track on the first album has a... Has sequel. A, has a sequel oh, on the cool. second album. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a concept. Yeah. We're almost prog rock at this stage. <laughs> double album. Although it's a double album, but it's still only as long as yeah. one side of anyone else's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. album. Yeah. So yeah. is it on that Punk Slime label you're with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you want to talk a bit about that punk sign label and how that came about? Oh, don't, they're going to hear this. We don't want to talk about it because we'll just cuss them. Oh it's really? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're great. They're uh, such a uh, again like us. They're like cockroaches. I don't know how they haven't been squished yet. No. Because mm. um, they do it purely for the love yeah. and uh, every every band they seem to sign is incredible. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and and they they've they been friends for a long time and, and we're kind of like the the, the the old uncles on, on the label now, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but you know Luke's a, a, a good friend. The, and they're, they're a great label to be on. It's, it's, it's yeah. one of those where it's like well, we couldn't ask to be in better company. Yeah, but they're like they're even more shanky than we are, really. Yeah, when it gets down to it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Probably like that. So. Yeah, exactly. It works, it works to our advantage. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when, when I'm thinking, when it comes to like that um, label, um, Punk's Lime, like, if you want something different, yeah. like, 
it's but there. Good. It's, yeah. like, it's just like having a friend with really good music taste. Yeah. Yeah. You can just trust that they're going to, any record they put oh, out, yeah. you're never going to take one of their records and just go, what the fuck? It's all going to be great. Oh, yeah. And all the, all the bands they've had live are all great as well. You know, as long as they last. They all seem yeah. to implode. Yeah. I don't know if it's something punk side do. Yeah. It's <laughs> killing all their bands. It, it's probably one of my favourite record labels at the yeah. moment, to be honest. Like, they never fail to like impress, you know. Yeah, I've got like this. This you have, you have, you tend to have like two or three, don't you, that you trust mm. implicitly, and then they're, mm. they're one that I would, even if they didn't put our records out. Yeah. Even if you didn't know the band, the band as well, you could just. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes, like when we go over there to play, I'll just steal a bunch of records <laughs> off them. And, they're always going to be good. Yeah. So, like, let's talk about your sound and what's the inspiration behind the sound of your music? Uh, necessity. It, it was more a case of don't try. Mm. We would just uh, do what we weren't capable of doing yeah. and see what it sounded like. And it tends to come out Great. how it does. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, and more noise. We're, we're both deaf as shit. So, like... <laughs> okay. it, 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 it's quite loud sounding music. <laughs> to us, it's not. That's the thing. It's like we, it. we put out one of the albums on Punk Slime and we thought that was our pop album. We were like, this is really clean mm. and yeah. well produced. And it's not, really apparently. Not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know. I think that 2013 album's brilliant. I like that track, You Are My Cunt. Oh, yeah. yeah what yeah. a great album. Well, I mean, song name, to be honest. It's that was, uh, that was That was my wife came up with that title. <laughs> well, when I met her in Brazil, we were on tour in Brazil. And I met her, and uh, and her English wasn't too great. And she, yeah, she said to my brother, she was just like, "Ah, you're my cunt," like, <laughs> thinking it was like a term of affection. Yeah. In a way, yeah, I guess. It like it was, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was meant that way. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but um, let's talk about your name, Black Mekon. Like, why Black Mekon? It's it's a really long and convoluted story that I'll probably get wrong and contradict myself. will change again. And it will change again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, there was um, prostitutes that were visited by missionaries a long, long time ago. And the missionaries would, would get these prostitutes pregnant. But then, obviously, it had to be it was like a dirty secret, so they would take the babies from them mm. and they would dump them on the Mekong River. Oh. Uh, but some of these babies survived and started their own tribe. Yeah. And then they would kill any religious people that went through that passed by them yeah. it became like a, 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 a legend that would murder religious folk and they were known as the black mekong oh blimey that's and very so deep <laughs> our mom named us after the black mekong oh cool because you know oh that's cool i like that am um, name to be honest like it's very a deep cool. deep meaning behind it it's very possible i just made all that up oh really <laughs> <laughs> Is but it, it's good, it's, even if it's made up. I mean, it's no point looking it up. I hate that people just Google legends. stuff now. Yeah. Shouldn't be able to just Google stuff. Yeah. Remember when you thought that Stan Laurel was Clint Eastwood's dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just then, that was just... I, just I, I didn't know that. No, because, you know, you could just Google it and find out it's not true. <laughs> but back in the day, you just let yeah. it ride, and it's just one of those things. Google has killed all good stories. Yeah. But it's got, like, a bit of a controversial side to it, so it's a very strong name, like, yeah. which I like. Yeah, yeah. A bit like Joy Division with that. The, the story behind that now yeah. and stuff like that like well, it's well, got... I, st I still see the black Mekong as heroes personally because yeah. they're just they're just killing these nasty religious paedophiles that are wandering around so they're, <laughs> they're good even though they're murderers savage murderers they're the good guys they're, they're getting the right people yeah <laughs> so how would you say a lot of people take the name and that like no one's ever asked. No, really? <laughs> yeah, no, no one's ever turned to us. They just sort of just accept it. Yeah. Mm. That's their name, Black yeah. Oh, cool. So let's talk about your debut album. And what was it like to, um, being together as a band for the first time, recording your first album? Well, we've always played together mm. forever yeah. and ever and ever. But uh, I, I couldn't play guitar, I still can't. But I couldn't <laughs> play guitar and he couldn't play drums. Yeah. He would play guitar, so we switched instruments to make it sound even worse. Oh no! And uh, yeah, and it was just more of a an, a an art damaged project rather than treating it as a band that we're yeah. going to go out and tour and etc. Yeah. etc. Et we wanted it, it was just for us mm. and nothing else, and we just did it uh, 
put some songs up on MySpace, I think. Yeah. Was, <laughs> so that yeah. That's what they used to do. Yeah, yeah. Was true, but it was like just to be put up there and left up there, like yeah. you know, a piece of art on a wall. And then immediately some cat messaged us and was like, I want you to come over and play Portugal. Oh, so we were like, ah, all right. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> okay, if that's what you want. Yeah. Did you do many gigs before that? Album? No, we did, we, we did not. Oh, but really? That's it. It was just. It, it was all concept, wasn't it? Before that. Yeah, it was yeah, just. Yeah. It purely was just us doing it for joy. Oh, yeah. On our own. And then. Uh, and Basically, then, yeah. you still do that now. You? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Why would you, you know, why wouldn't you do it? That's it. And then, mm. like I say, you just. We'd get these cats just sort of offering us gigs in exotic hot countries and there's no way we would say no yeah so even though we weren't equipped to go and play these mm. shows we'd go and do them mm. and we got away with it and we got away with it we still get away with it so would you say the music you listen to as a past like growing up and stuff like that influenced your stuff you play now yeah yeah I, I only listen to I mean growing up I only listened to hip hop yeah which is like but we're talking Man, showing my age, but we're talking like eighties hip hop. Mm, the good stuff, like the good stuff. Yeah, yeah I was off it by yeah. like nineteen ninety. I was done with it. Um, and I still think we're a hip hop. Yeah, funny <laughs> yeah. anyone sees that. And then after that, yeah, it's like in the nineties, getting introduced to a lot of stuff via John Spencer, which ties yeah. it into this gig. Mm. Yeah. And getting introduced to a lot of that kind of stuff and that raw kind of, you know, it's almost painful music. Yeah. And that all influences us, and that's, mm. that's pretty much. Yeah, you know, it's quite eclectic, isn't it? There's nothing. It's like it's like it's not, they don't just stick to no the same things. It's, it's always quite eclectic for me. Mm. Yeah, massive range of music. I remember uh, Judah Bauer from the Blues Explosion saying to me, "You got to narrow your genres." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You were just rapping a minute ago." Like, Shut the fuck up. But I guess, like with like hip hop and stuff like that, that was pretty raw when it first came yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly. then, obviously, in the nineties, record labels got involved. And yeah, yeah. Overproduced it, so like it was like when they used to manufacture their own, you know, drum machines and stuff, yeah, and it yeah. would sound distorted and overdriven. Yeah, it'd just be the repetitive rhythm, you know, because it would just be a single loop on it. That kind of thing, the sound of just the almost the kind of repetitive nature of it. But really, it's the, uh, the only thing that I would lose from the hip hop side of it is a, is everything was too long. Mm -hmm. It's like we were, you like we, we like brevity, yeah. yeah we yeah, get yeah. to the point. It's got a bit of that punk thing going on there oh, because yeah. two minute tracks. It was like that as well. Pretty big era for like two minute tracks. Yeah, like, yeah. and way prefer that. Yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's. it's it, I'd rather be sushi than a, a, a roast dinner. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you can get more song, get through more songs, like as well. Like get through more songs, yeah. yeah like, Do a massive set list. It's still only twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. that part's annoying. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Albums are like twenty minutes, ain't they? Like but it's really annoying. That part is really annoying because we'll like write, a, you know, a list of songs we're going to play at a show and be like, it's like forty songs there. <laughs> but it will be about twenty minutes. <laughs> That's <laughs> mad. We're still going to add another ten songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like. um yeah, I, I did get like with your music like, a bit of a punky vibe, but then a bit of a sixties garage sound to oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the garage thing's a huge thing. Mm. I think the punk side of it is more the, the DIY aspect yes, and you know yeah. self-taught and self-trained. Mm. And I think you can play any kind of music. Like we were saying with hip hop, early hip hop was punk to me. Oh, that was the yeah. sound of it. It yeah. was, and the, the rebellion of it. You get all, all of that comes across. I think when it's that DIY aspect, and, mm. and, and especially when you're, you know, self-taught and self-trained and building instruments that you, you don't know how they work and playing things upside down in the wrong way around. And yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's the that's good the stuff. Fun, that's, yeah. that's the good thing about it. No one wants to just hear a Rolling Stones record. <laughs> <laughs> Not like yeah. a new one. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Just hear, true, just, true. Like, wants to hear a new Rolling Stones record no one don't want to live in the past when you're looking no yeah even though we just re-recorded that <laughs> yeah, yeah. living in the past but it still sounds fresh like that's what I like about it cool man yeah yeah um, also I like the album covers I find them a bit punky oh, like yeah, looking yeah. but who just like the artwork for your album covers and stuff like that that would be me oh really well oh, cool. actually I think yeah I've done most of them 
Was it the one your wife Priscilla did? Yeah, my wife Priscilla did one in the Hague, which was like a, 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 one of her illustrations. This one here. Oh, I like uh, that. but mo most of them, yeah, I've tended to do them. I can't think we've ever had any guests. We did like a series of seven inches, and mm. I was lucky to get uh, Dave Twist to do one of the covers. He's a he's a local legend. Mm. He did one of the covers for uh, the Table Scraps flip side because we did a series of seven inches B sides with like our favourite bands. Mm. Um, and yeah, he does. But other than that, I, I tend to do most of them. Again, it's just it, it, it's it's not. I would rather not. <laughs> you yeah. know, but it's one of those yeah. where it's like everything we do everything in house. Yeah, it's just screen. easier, isn't it's it? It's easier, yeah. yeah, and we can get it done. We don't have to, and I would never want to ask for anything for free. Basically, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's like so unless we have got the money to yeah. to front, I, I wouldn't really want to hit up some artist to do it for free. You know, yeah. as much as I would like anyone else to do that, yeah. <laughs> do that stuff. Well, I guess that so. You, do you feel like more like what's the word? Like you feel feel like you? Oh, I can't think of the word now. I guess like well, <laughs> you're doing it all yourself yeah, type yeah, thing, yeah. right? Yeah, there's there's that, but it's not a controlling kind of way. You know, it's mm. not that we need to control. Like it's it, it's just necessity. Yeah, it really is. There's well, um, no reality where you can just decide to pay. An artist that you like no. to do something for you. Yeah. Just we're just not that wealthy. No, yeah. no. <laughs> that's it. That like we can we manage to sort of stick at it and keep going mm. because of the way we keep it all in house yeah. and keep everything. And that's a, a boring side of it, but you know, financially, just manage to keep it ticking yeah. over. Yeah. And we don't. We're not going to end up screwed and thousands of pounds in debt. Yeah. As long as we can keep it on the level mm. and keep going. So, so, have you been doing well with um, your records? I don't know. Don't know. I've had no angry emails from Punk Slime, so I think, uh, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah. It? We just don't ask. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask them and then we won't find out. It's all accessible on Bandcamp and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we do. We, we've got quite a, a, you know, a decent following mm. of people that like vinyl. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, as Spotify is for shit. But mm. I don't care about that because that doesn't bring any money. Yeah, oh, but good. we do that. good with vinyl sales. So. Yeah, it's nice that you're doing it on vinyl as well because yeah, always, man. And yeah. that, is, that is purely just because we want to see it on vinyl. Yeah. And yeah, listen to it on vinyl. It's like that's a that's one of those things you can never imagine. Like when you first start a band, you can never imagine actually having a record. Your record, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you can do it any other way. You uh, Make a CD, yeah. Make a CD, make or an put it on a cassette. Yeah, yeah. I it guess it's so much easier record. doing it that way as well. Like, yeah, it's, it, it, and it, it sort of becomes a bit more disposable. Mm. Which, I mean, I'm for it as well. I'm, I'm not one of these kind of. It's got to be on vinyl. Can't be in, not at all. I think like it's a great delivery system, the digital thing. But at the same time, just for us, we yeah. have that. Yeah. Open that box and have a bunch of records, but not yeah. to sell. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it like when you had your like your first ever al album on vinyl in your hands? Oh, like that's great. exactly that that feeling. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what was that? For? It was Stolen Bible, Bible, wasn't yeah, it? That was Stolen Bible two or something like that. Yeah, I don't know where two came from. <laughs> oh, it's, it was. Uh, it was we did two albums before that. Which we think we only ever, I think we only ever printed CDs, CDs yeah, anyway. So Punk yeah. oh, yeah. took the two, the two albums and Cherry Pick Tracks. Oh, off the, I haven't heard those albums. Yeah, yeah, the first one was the. Well, yeah, the first one. Oh, okay. one called Broke Into Always On. They yeah. were like just tour CDs because at the time, like I say, we weren't a band in that sense, but we were getting tour offers from Brazil and around Europe and stuff. So yeah. we had to have merch. We hadn't got a record. Like we'd only got the albums that we'd made here ourselves. Mm. So we were just burning CDs and yeah. taking those for the tours. Okay. So those are our first two albums, kind of, but yeah. they were never Released. official. Yeah, yeah. So what other places have you toured then? And have you gained much following from other countries and stuff like uh, that? Well, we did like, when we first started, we did Brazil a bunch. Yeah, and that was great. Of Brazil, mm. yeah. Um, now we tend to tend to do Japan a lot. Mm, yeah, Japan's been great. Like we, you know, doing it with King Brothers, awesome, amazing band. Somehow ended up hanging out with them. 
mm. and ended up touring with them. They were fans, they were mutual yeah. fans. We, had, we, like, we were fans of them, and like, yeah. fans of us. <laughs> yeah, it was like every, every, when we first went to play Japan, it was uh, Guitar Wolf invited us over. Oh. Uh, Guitar Wolf. And everyone that watched us were like, Do you like King Brothers? We were mm. like, Fuck yeah. They yeah. Like our fa- they're one of the reasons that we're you know, doing this kind of music. Yeah. And then our tour manager at the time, she heard someone asking us and us saying we love them and she was like I know the King Brothers I'll yeah. call them and she just right. called them there and then and they were like fuck we're big Black Megan fans and it's like what the fuck yeah. it's weird isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we ended up like teaming up with them and they'd come and tour here with us and we'd mm. go and tour there mm. and we did that up until 2019 yeah. Yeah. was the last time we played yeah so where would you say is your main fan base and stuff like that <laughs> Japan no. Japan yeah. <laughs> just, just because we you know, hammering it all the time because we yeah. won't leave them alone. Yeah, yeah. As we go over there, and yeah, it's a uh, that seems to be the place that that yeah, reacts yeah. best to us, and we we seem to do better there than yeah than most places we play. We haven't been back to Brazil for a long time. Mm. We've, we've done sporadic shows in the states, but mm. nothing nothing to sort of no. really get a foothold in there. It's impossible over there. It's so big. Yeah, well, the music scenes. Of- all out there out in America as well. Yeah, and it's so huge, man, that like it's almost impossible to reach it all. Mm. Um and it's worse place to tour than here for, for funding and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um Europe, I think it always tends to be it, it always used to tend to be hot t- sort of hot tropical countries that liked us. I don't know why that's all about. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah, <laughs> but, right, yeah. Oh, no. but yeah, it'd always be like, you know, Portugal and, and Brazil and Spain and Argentina, yeah. Chile. It's like, but yeah, yeah, the only places that actually struck a chord, um, mm. Brazil massively, and, yeah. and, and then Japan just seemed to be like a... That's our yeah, two yeah. homes, isn't it? Japan yeah, and then Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if Brazil would still love us. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't been back for years. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> might be jaded, I don't know. Yeah, they might be sick that we haven't visited. Well, it's great to hear like these other countries like into your music and that, and how they discovered your music and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess like it was touring. Hmm. It can only have been touring, really. Yeah. Are they, in Japan, there was something. It, it's so hard to work out because in, when we first went to Japan, we were the Christmas number one in Tower Records. <laughs> what, <laughs> what track or what? Our what? album. Oh, the album. It was like the alternative album chart yeah. Tower Records in Japan we were the mad <laughs> it was like what how I prefer the charts it? over there than here <laughs> it didn't make any sense to us at all we couldn't we couldn't even work out how our record had got there I mean obviously it was distribution through punk slide and stuff yeah even Luke seemed surprised he was yeah, like yeah. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but um, you said like earlier that like you never toured in the UK like but you toured in like, all those other countries so yeah, what's that like we did one tour of the UK we? one or two we did one with King Brothers oh yeah sorry yeah, we mm. did that. Yeah, yeah. but that was only recently yeah that oh, really? was only like the last five years wasn't yeah, it yeah, mm. yeah. blimey and he's, he's always just he's a facilitator isn't he? like yeah do you know what I mean like the it wasn't. It wasn't got nothing against England. No, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. But we don't just... do anything if it's if it's too much like hard work. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole reason we do it is yeah. to enjoy ourselves. So, like you know, if, it, if it's well, going to be going to be slogging away trying to book a tour, so I fuck that then. I like. And when you're in the UK, you can just go. Everything's so close. We, mm. we can just you know drive up to Glasgow and just do two shows and then come. Oh, oh no, no. Yeah, we don't need to. You don't need to stay there. No, I think. there is no need for us to really sort of, you know, pick Just a bunch of dates in a row. Yeah, yeah. Odd gig do. here and there. Yeah, and stuff exactly. Like that. Yeah, so it's, yeah. I mean, like collectively, we've probably done about forty tours of the UK, yeah. but never like you know. An oh, no, official tour. No, yeah. don't need to do that. Like, are you going to do anything like for like yeah, recent release in March? Are you going to do any gigs for that? Yeah, we are just just talking about that before you turned up we were like we should probably try and sell them boxes of records yeah. that we've got in the yeah, cupboard yeah. so yeah we don't know I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't figured it out yet the only things we've got planned are we're going over to Germany in July to play in a forest somewhere yeah yeah uh, if we don't get murdered which I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's strange yeah it's like yeah. from out of nowhere yeah this thing come thing this, this promoter contacted and said Rogue Fest Rogue Fest 
Right. Oh, right. I'm going to say it wrong. So I'll actually, that sounds familiar, that festival. Mm, yeah. Is it quite a big one or an invent one? Or? I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know anything really about it. That's the thing. And it's like, yeah. it's in a forest in, in the... That sounds good, that, that does. The wilderness of Germany, yeah. So that's definitely where you get killed. This is the start of the movie, right? <laughs> Fair like, enough. Look at the line from the previous years. Film. It's like, find any of those bands now. I don't know. All disappeared. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, like... So, if we, if we don't get murdered, then we'll, we'll probably do a few dates. But this interview camp. might become really famous if that happens. Could be the last interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah the last interview. And also, they do say when shit like that happens to bands, like they get massive then after that. When we first uh, played in Brazil and we, we did our first tour, after it we were like knackered. Mm. We were like, what if we just fake our deaths? Yeah. And then, you know, we can just. That's a good idea. Way yeah. more just ride off it. Yeah. We'll just ride off it. You know, no one's going to know. We've got the mask. Well, Michael Jackson done it and Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac. Yeah. I actually know Tupac. Elvis isn't dead. Tupac's alive. He lives in Norway. Oh, really? Shout out to Tupac. Yeah, man, I see him all the time. Oh, fuck I'll show you a phone on my phone, friends with him. That's, so you really think, like, do you actually do that, fake the death? Like some of the musicians? I'll show you this picture of my friend. You yeah. decide if it's Tupac yeah. or not. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about your masks and how what what's what are your masks you wear? <laughs> <laughs> like where did that come about? Like what 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 made you come up with that idea with gigs and and do you wear them in your everyday life as well? <laughs> yeah, they never come off. Really? Yeah. We used to we, that was that did used to be our answer what masks. Yeah. But it would just elicit confused faces. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, uh, I don't know where it came from. It was all part uh, of the Black Mekong mythology. It was all. I like the vibe. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, uh, you know. And um, they had like anonymity, like the like Batman. You can put on a little. A little rubber mask and no one knows. Yeah, the you absurd are. idea yeah. that no one would know. Suddenly no one recognises you, so you could just do you could just do it without any like it's not you doing it. Hmm. And like cool, you've got like Charlie yeah. Patton and stuff. It's got there's a history of like great bands. And also it, it tends to anger a lot of music purists mm. which are, I'm always a fan of antagonising snobs oh yeah and you get a lot of music like, there used to be a lot of like sort of garage purists that would get all huffy because we mm. were wearing masks and I'm like yeah fuck you it is a good idea good. man it, it kind of puts you out there as like a bit different to like, other bands and but shit I always like loved, that I, I always loved any band that sort of made any kind of effort mm. in the visual side of it yeah you know, again, it's not not a put down of someone who no. would who would get on stage in their t shirt and their jeans. That's you it's do so that easy to do I'd that. Rather, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're gonna get on stage, I'd rather be really them, yeah. uncomfortable. That's it's all fun. about a performance. You're doing a performance yeah. to the people, like yeah, and like, like you, yeah, certainly great bands I've seen in the past. Like, like the first time I saw Guitar Wolf, and yeah, Hales, you know, strut on um, all of them in head yeah. to toe leather, Greasy and he's got those yeah, wrap around yeah. shades on oh, that don't cool. come off his head. It's like, man, that, that just looks so great. Yeah. Like when, when we were in Japan, every band upstaged us yeah. on outfits. We looked so boring. Yeah, we're not at the norm in Japan. <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're the, first, we're the first time we played, we were like, they're going to think this is weird. We've got the masks on. And then the first band that went on all had like eyeball heads, like the residents. Yeah. One of them was wearing a nappy. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, the next band had like like giant dragon heads with lights coming out the front. We're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I well, guess we're the boring space. <laughs> the over no, I think it's a cool look, especially like somewhere like around Birmingham and stuff like that. Like just doing a gig in Birmingham and that. Yeah, like, it's uh, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's just our preference. It really is. Mm. And like I say, it, it did used to I did used to like it when it annoyed certain people. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so they were the same kind of like it was the same kind of garage purists that would be annoyed at Bob Lug. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, there you yeah. go. There's another. There's another example. Perfect example. You see, Bob Lutz, fucking amazing mm. motorcycle helmet that he can't see through. It's super tight jumpsuit. <laughs> that's yeah. like, and, and when you do it, when you and when you're wearing this kind of thing and trying to play, <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. It gets, yeah, it's, it does it's, get really it's, hard. It, it's like panic. It's yeah, like, the, the, the show that you play is just chaos and yeah. panic, and it just adds to it for us. Mm. It makes it much more yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. I feel like like a band and that, like you need to kind of like do something that will kind of put you on the map, like piss people off and shit like that. Not deliberately we don't, but... But I nice. think it's, it's a good it's a idea. Nice, it's, a nice, it's a nice thing when it does. It's a bit like sex right pistols people. and that. But when, it, when you annoy the right people, you know that. that, that that's the good you're on the right track. Yeah. Mm. It's not so much anymore, though. I don't think it does. People, yeah. people are more uh, open to, to this kind of thing now. Yeah. But back when we started, it did I think. Too. Some people just a bit narrow minded when it comes to music, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's like that that's changed a lot just in a short fifteen years span. Yeah. Like say at the start it was like <laughs> almost confused, angry looks. <laughs> and now we're pretty we're, we're quite standard with yeah. the play now, you know, people are just like, Yeah, okay, just get it. With me, I'm like literally open to anything, like any style or look or whatever. Like, That's great. I think that is a, a, a great thing about the way music has gone in the last decade. When it comes to your lyrics, how would you say, what, what type of stuff do you usually like to write about? Um, most of it is off the cuff. You know, a lot of it will just be, I will literally write them mm. as I'm singing them. Like oh, yeah. a lot of it. Uh, stupid stories. Yeah, it is mostly stupid stories. You know, uh, uh, it can be anything. Mm. Uh, it, it, very, very rarely it will be uh, about a particular specific thing that's specific to me. Yeah, it will generally be a crazy story about some weird character or some weird idea. Or yeah, there isn't a, there isn't a set thing or way that I do it. 
Some of them are fucking great. It's like it's a shame. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just sort of no, it's with some really I don't remember a lot of them as well because this, this, the, the recordings are so. Uh, the rawness of it. Dense. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to make out. I don't but remember. That's a lot what of them. I like. A lot of them. There was once I can't remember which it was, but we were going to start doing it live, and I was. I don't remember these lyrics. So I listened to the record. I was like, I don't That's know, have no idea yeah, what yeah. that is. So how just would make new ones up? <laughs> that would you do that in a performance? I then? just make new ones up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just sounds similar. Yeah, I yeah. Like that. But there was some of them. Even we didn't make any. But yeah, uh, and some of the lyrics are fucking crap. I should write them. Down. <laughs> I should print them. People still do lyrics in albums. I'm not printing out lyrics. Fuck like that. Nah, I just, nah. I just went around it then and changed my mind completely. It's a bit like. When someone's like singing the lyrics to the song and it end up being the wrong lyrics and they make up their own song. It's better. Yeah. So much better. So that's why like uh, if, if ever you do, it's like if ever we did a cover song, mm. rarely, re- but we've done a few, we wouldn't listen to the song and try and play it. It would just be how we'd remembered it yeah. from whenever when we When you were like, a kid listening to it yeah, or something yeah. like that. We did, we did a, a Happy Monday song, Rope for Luck. Yeah. And... The way we played it was based on <laughs> based on how I remembered it, and I remembered a weird remix. It yeah. wasn't even the proper song, so it's like our version sounds nothing at all like <laughs> the actual tune or the riff or the song or the rhythm. Mm. That's just much better. It's like yeah, you're, you're making your own. But that's the rawness to it as well. Yeah. Again, like I'd rather hear it on a on a radio and miles away and go, "What's that?" It's like <laughs> it's kind of like. You're making your own version. If you're doing a cover as well, you're making your own yeah. version. Do it instead of doing a copy. And the same with lyrics. Yeah, it's like you say, it's much better if you just make your own ones up and you've got, you've got them completely wrong. Yeah. And it's about you, <laughs> completely different subject matter and everything. It's kind of funny when people point it out to you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in the car singing the song and you think the lyrics are right. <laughs> and someone just goes, they're not the fucking lyrics. <laughs> and they go on the phone and everything and prove it to you. And you're like, oh, fuck's sake. Again, <laughs> fucking Google thing. Much better if you don't know and you yeah. don't, you know. I'll, so it's gone. My girlfriend does that to me all the time. Oh, God, that's the, you should have that band. Yeah, that's just not fair. Oh no, I'm like, who cares? Who cares? You just ruined it. It's like spoiling a magic trick, isn't it? I, I know. Who wants to find out how magic tricks done? It's like when people say what Frankie goes to Hollywood songs about or something like that. Yeah. You might think of it like, oh, relax about, I don't know. Whatever. Take it easy. But then someone Sunday. goes, yeah, yeah. But then someone goes, oh, it's about wanking. Yeah. <laughs> well, like that one in particular, you kind of know that one's about wanking. Only yeah, but like when I was a kid, oh, right, yeah. and being told that, he was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I remember hearing that song as a kid and just thinking, I do know that. Like, <laughs> taking it easy. Then just a nice turning Japanese by the Vipers and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I genuinely thought that was about turning Japanese. I mean, a Japanese like a misses. sci-fi sort of story. Yeah, like, but like I hate it when people like ruin the lyrics for you and just like make your own story with it. I'm still doing backing vocals now, and they're not the they're not the backing vocals. I don't know, I was going to tell you what the real ones are. <laughs> better that way. Yeah, much better. More rock and roll and that. Like, but um, I'll tell you about that. That reminds me of like random stories and shit like that. I don't know, have you heard of the Liverpool scene? No. They've like, done a song and it's called The Tram to Frankenstein or something like that. Like that and, yeah, it's really good, man. You should listen to it. The Liverpool scene. And, and Liverpool on, scene. Yeah, on Spotify. Um, they've got this like comp album and it's called The Adventures Of. It's really good and that's like a brilliant track. It's very psyche sound in that fucking louder the part. Frankenstein. Well, our next album is entirely about werewolves. So oh, I'm no. going to think we ripped off the Liverpool scene. <laughs> yeah, but Einstein. they just do stories and lyrics, and they've done a story called Sun Sun, and it's about, it was like telling his mum what he wants to do with the future and that, and she's too deaf and she can't hear. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> absolute genius. Yeah, that was like late like 60s and that. That's, that's, that's great stuff. That's yeah. what I love. Stories. Mm. You know, like, Tom Waits. Oh, Bob Tom Waits, man. Know, Bob Dylan, great Nick Cave and stuff but you, like that. But that's like, we're doing that, but you can't understand anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a real good hearing to like understand and guess. Like. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like say, I like, think I can't understand some of us. But then with the music, you kind of get that gig feel with it. 
if you was at a gig, like you can imagine. Yeah. Like, would you say you're very similar to what you sound like on the albums at gigs? We hope so. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. We yeah. do. We do tend to approach it like if 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 you can't do it live, then it shouldn't. Yeah. Sound like that on the record. Was that what you like aimed for when you was recording? Or we didn't aim for anything. Yeah. No. Really. There's no forethought at all mm. with anything. Yeah. We do, yeah. 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 As you might be able to tell. Mm. We're just constantly flying the plane into yeah. the side of the mountain. Mm. That's the way we operate yeah. everything. So, so like, can you, rec- as we're on the subjects of gigs and that, can you recall your first ever gig together and what was that like and what was your nerves like? And then? The first one we did was projected on a wall here, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, cool. We put a party on that, 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 that counts. Yeah, our first, that was our first show. Was, uh, I can't remember who. We, we put a show on here for... I don't remember who the band was. No, I'm not sure. I know David Viner was here. Mm. Mm. Uh, but I can't remember who it was. And we, yeah, we projected it onto the wall rather yeah. than actually appearing. And then we stood in the audience and just heckled <laughs> the, the performance. And then after that, I think our first one was in New York. Oh, no. At the Pussycat Lounge. Right. Oh, right. that venue. Is it a good venue? <laughs> it's, it was an, uh, an old strip club. Yeah. Oh, no. it, in, uh, you, it was in the, the financial district. Um, I mean, depends how you, how you rate yeah. venues <laughs> and on what you're rating them. It sounds cool, man. It was fun. Yeah. It was a lot like, of fun. With it being like a strict club, like, I like that. We got, we, we, we like the, the first album, Free Range Hassle, a lot of it was stories about flat roof strip clubs and that kind of thing. But, we did kind of like after a while we kind of got a little bit misconstrued and we were getting put on shows with like flames and dice and burlesque yeah, dancers yeah. and that's not us no, you no, know no. it's not titillation no. why we do it it was never anything uh it was never that kind of macho element to yeah, what we yeah. were doing and we didn't like that that's mm. why the next album we did we kind of deliberately veered away and did something a bit more psyche and a bit yeah a bit more insular rather than so we think people were kind of getting the wrong idea, maybe. Yeah. Um, and thinking we were this kind of macho, yeah. aggressive, you know, band that were into tits. Yeah. Too many bands thing. like too many bands like that. I and guess it's, it's not our bag, and it's like a, a, I think we kind of you know, especially because a lot a lot of the songs, those early songs, are quite sort of raunchy. So yeah. I think we were kind of getting sold as this. So like you just got away from that. From yeah, we kind of just sort of and just sort of let people know, no, that's not why that's we do us. that. Yeah. But but it is, you know, that we love that kind of music. Yeah. At the same time, we do love like that's music that could be played in a strip club. Yeah. Oh yeah, same. Yeah. Below the belt kind of. There's a lot of tracks like I'd hit, heard in the past. I'm like, that sounds that'd be good for like a strip T scene yeah, on a film yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like. Like Tarantino films yeah. and shit, like Death Proof, that lap dancing scene, like yeah. tracks like that. You're like, that'd be a good strip club song. Yeah, that, that's it. It's the, it's the music that we love, and part of it was the stories that we'd written with the again the lyrics that can't be understood. Yeah, but yeah, I think it kind of it, it started to get kind of misconstrued, and then we were like, well, we can't explain ourselves verbally because no yeah. one can hear us, no one yeah. can understand yeah. what I'm saying. So we need to swerve the swerve the truck a little bit and yeah. let people know nope That's no burlesque yeah, yeah. no pasties yeah. no fucking titty dancers yeah. <laughs> not that bad but um, like when it comes to gigs how would you say you developed with gigs and stuff would you say you changed much from like your first gig or... yeah because it changes every time because we we normally would rope in one of our friends or family to come and play with us just yeah. to uh, add to it a little bit and a lot of times to bring our friends on holiday with us. <laughs> um, yeah. So so pretty much every time we played, we, we would have someone else would do the drums. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And my brother would play second guitar. Oh, cool. Um, and, and it's only now we've gone right back to the beginning and we're doing it as a two-piece again yeah. live. Uh, so every time it's completely different. It changes the sound no. a lot, mm. which is... Uh, Something we weren't aware of because we're still playing just the same and we're still having fun just the same. Yeah, but other people would not say, yeah. "Oh, it sounds you know a lot different to the record," and we wouldn't really figure out it's because we've got a whole different band yeah. than we yeah. normally would have. Yeah. Um, but now is the closest we are to 
black meek on the, yeah. the way it is the original like, yeah because yeah. it's just the two of us again yeah we killed all those other bastards <laughs> <laughs> they, would, they would just die off one by one yeah so like what would you say is your biggest accomplishment as a band so far in your career we're still here so we're still here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um there is no we're not aiming no, towards no. anything so yeah. we never really think of it like that mm. like uh, from an outside perspective, I really do think endurance, like it's like, holy mm. shit, they're still alive mm. and doing it. I think that feels like yeah. one thing. Like every now and then you look back and you realise you played with your heroes. And at yeah. the time, it's not a big deal. Sometimes yeah. I, I reminisce and be yeah. like, wow, well, that's crazy. But it was never yeah. an aim, it was never a, it's not an achievement for yeah, us. Yeah. It's just been part of the journey and it just all feels really natural. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I mean, achievement. we had loads. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like <laughs> playing all over the world, playing with people yeah. that we've like grew up yeah. listening to, yeah, yeah. Uh, hanging out with these stuff cats. on vinyl as well, man. That must be like a big achievement. Getting, yeah, getting our own vinyl yeah. records. Yeah, that's huge. That'd be like my dream, to be honest. Like, even if it didn't get anywhere, I'll be like happy yeah, to yeah, have my stuff. Just get it there in your hand. Yeah. Like, and just so and just being able to keep doing it, just doing it without like we haven't had to with no thought, yeah, you know, never been any struggle, it's not, it's not no question, work. just yeah. keep going, yeah. And that's yeah, that, that I guess that's the one endurance, mm. man. And we still kind of like each other, yeah, yeah just yeah. About. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, another thing that your masks, you know, when you go shopping and that for food, would yeah. you still wear the masks? Yeah. Oh really? So you are you lying or no, no, oh, no. Well, like in, we're in, when we're on tour. You can't wear them going through airports because you want to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but when we're on tour, we do. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. The, only day, the only day that we didn't when we were on tour was in Tokyo and it was Halloween. Yeah. And we went to uh, the, the main square in Tokyo and I've never seen so yeah. many people. Every single person that was in a costume. It's <laughs> the Best only Halloween time we don't wear masks. <laughs> Although I guess for us, we had only just got there, and because the masks are our norm, we were in costume. We were in costume, Looking not normal. having masks. Yeah, yeah. So that's the way I yeah, can yeah. sort myself. That's cool, man. That's cool. Um, I'm on the last couple of questions. Um, the, I, I always ask this question: Is there any recommending bands on your like level of sound Ooh. and stuff like that that you like to recommend, or Ooh. even on the punk slime label? Punk slime on the, on, on the punk slime label. I love Ken Trails. They're, yeah, they're new records. They're doing yeah. brilliant. They're, and they're another band where the, the they've survived moving city mm. and having to yeah, completely yeah. start. Like the the two main girls moved to to Manchester from London and had to completely start with another whole new band during the pandemic. Yeah. And they've done it. And their latest records. Yeah, man. Oh, I've been Brilliant. Oh, uh, cool. Ken Trails. I saw the devil in St. Joseph the other day. Mm. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I haven't seen them for a few years, man. They're fucking great. Mm. Like, they're really good. They're really man. good. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Devil in St. Joseph. Mm. Uh, um, Margarita Witch Cult, who I still haven't seen, but they have a room <laughs> there, did. so we hear them. They're so yeah. fucking loud. Oh, really? I <laughs> not hear them. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. Uh, Did they put, I think now they're in local, like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, it's, fucking it's hell. It's like. Um, uh, Scott and James from Table Scraps. Mm. Uh, that's Table Scraps room down the end, and uh, and yeah, and they were I have to get in there. touch with them, man. Like, yeah, yeah they're, 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 what's been coming out of that room's great. I'm mm. looking forward to seeing them. Like, yeah, who else? Temple Street Resistance. These, uh, these cats who share the oh. room with us. Oh, nice. Uh, 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 Ali and Oscar, old old friend of ours, Ali, mm. and. Uh, and he's another one who just sort of started just as the pandemic started. Yeah, yeah. I think any of these cats who have either started or, or flourished and thrived during the pandemic, you've got to respect that. Yeah. Love it. I, guess like it's about about. I guess it's something to write about. I guess it's something to write about as well. Like, pandemic just gone and then now there's a World War Three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we just, uh, I mean, we became a cartoon. Literally became a cartoon for mm. the first year of the pandemic. Mm. Just because it was... Uh, Nothing else to do. I don't know. If a, a, a lot of our songs are so cynical that they would all mm. sound like they're about a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> It'd sound like prophets because yeah. uh, 
that some of the songs we wrote in 2010 would sound like they were about <laughs> the global band. Some... Table Scratch did that. They they wrote an album that was like a, a concept album that was after a, an apocalypse, after a pandemic in the future, and yeah. they were the last band standing. Oh, mad. And <laughs> it, it took them so long to record it. The actual pandemic happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they finished it. Well, that's more to write about, I guess. You get them like, I guess that's the advantage, being a band and that. When bad things do happen in the world, you've got something to write about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm no, we're never at a loss for that, because we, we've got stupid brains full of squirrels that won't shut up but there's always a million stories and a million yeah. ideas but um yeah i can't think of any other new bands just i just found a band called printhead well, that's a good I name no idea it's, it seems like it's just one guy i can tell you nothing about him or <laughs> them but i really like it really uh the name's like anxiety yeah. sort of sounding yeah. driven fast sounds short cool, songs man. Sounds cool, like yeah. a bit post punky sounding. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like that as well. I don't know. I, I don't know where they're from. I probably shouldn't recommend them because that could be like Nazis or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you know nothing at all about yeah. the band. Or, but, but yeah, Printhead. It's good, good sound. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, by the way, I just want to say I love your setup in here. By the oh, way, it's really cool, man. Like it's our, uh, our bunker. Yeah, it looks nice, man. But um. Last question. Have you got um, anything inspiring to say to the listeners? Don't try. Hmm. That's, That's our motto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's our motto. Yeah. Don't no, try. Nice. And you can take that away if you want. Hmm. But um, thank you for doing the podcast. I really thank appreciate it. Us. Yeah, it was great interviewing you guys. It's and good to meet you. It's good to meet you too, man. And take care and wish you luck with the John Spencer gig. Nice one, mate. Yeah, nice one. Take care. All right, see you soon, man.